one who said that Indians had been part of a huge force that had liberated Italy, or that thousands of Indian soldiers had laid down their lives in Europe to demolish fascism and win the greatest and bloodiest war in history. It's true, and it happened just 60 years ago. And so to Italy, to the snow and mud of sunny Italy. We might have expected the Italian climate to have suited the Indian soldier, but something went wrong with the Italian climate. It wasn't up to guidebook standards. When Italian mud didn't bar the way, there was snow. Indians on snow patrol, and in Italy of all places, make a strange picture. And when snow and mud had cleared, there were the mines. Mines to be found and their fuses drawn. A nasty, ticklish job. This is the story of our forgotten soldiers. Soldiers who till this day are remembered in Italy by people like Paola Tambini on her little farm in the Faenza area of Italy. I remember that uh, the women that uh, were here in the, in the house uh, said that uh, these uh, uh, sick were very handsome. now more than 70 years old the decades have flown by her memory of meeting Indian soldiers during the Second World War are vivid it's a cherished memory her relatives who also met the soldiers bring out this collection of the badges of Indian soldiers who'd passed by the area a virtual who's who of some of the finest regiments in the modern Indian Army the Maratha light infantry the Rajputana rifles the Punjab regiment the Gurkha rifles, among others. I was 10 years old, and uh, um, Andreuccio was 11 years old, and we lived here all together. And you, you used can... to play with the Gurkha soldiers? Yes, a lot of, a lot of that. Not when the left, the English left, and uh, was here, because it was very strict. <laughs> Stunning Benedictine Abbey at Monte Cassino, 1,700 feet above the small town of Cassino. The natural beauty of the Liri Valley makes it hard to believe that this picture postcard setting was at the center of a battle which stands in the heroic category of Dunkirk, Stalingrad or Cayenne. This is what happened in February 1944. Unable to make any breakthrough against German positions in and around the hill, the Allies targeted the centuries-old abbey itself. It was one of the first acts of desperation in a battle where Allied generals grossly underestimated the strength of the enemy. A battle where Allied forces confronted German stormtroopers who'd blown defensive positions out of rock, strewn the countryside with landmines and converted stone-built homes and small villages into almost impregnable defensive positions. Remember all those stories of Tiger Hill, of Indian soldiers having to clamber up hillsides in the face of incessant machine gun fire? Well, in a sense, here in Monte Cassino, it was the original Tiger Hill type of operation, where it took not one, but four battles for Allied soldiers to be able to capture the abbey behind me, an abbey located in what has been described as one of the strongest defensive positions in military history. Indian soldiers were in the thick of action in Monte Cassino, part of a huge coalition force which also saw New Zealand, Polish, American, Canadian and French troops. Together these men, soldiers from distant lands, men with little or no cultural similarities, lived together 
and often died together. They were all heroes, young men, many just teenagers, some conscripts, others volunteers, thrown into the midst of a living hell. Mr. Galloway wanted to get hold of the jeep. Who was Galloway? Uh, he was uh, one of the officers, yeah. senior to me, which I realized when he said he is senior to me. So I said, all right, you take the jeep. You take the front jeep. He was a British officer. And uh, he took the jeep, he started driving, and I started into the second jeep. And there we were going around in the corner way. And there was shelling going on, which was a normal thing. And there came a bomb, and it went straight into his jeep. And jeep went and Galway went. Colonel Harwan Singh was a new recruit in the Indian Army when he fought in Italy. Fighting almost unbelievable odds, he took on a German position with a handful of men, and despite being hit three times, continued to fight, ultimately being awarded the military cross. He pulls out old war memorabilia, a booklet called The Englishman in Italy, a self-instructor guide to learn Italian, and also an intelligence document, the regimental officer's handbook of the German army. You know, when we closed up with the Germans, we closed up with the Germans, and then there was almost a hand-to-hand -hand fight. So they were on the other side, we were on this side. So the fellow officers just threw a hand grenade. I was with the, uh, the leading platoon, see, I was with the second one there. The, the, so there was hand grenade, son of a goal, like up, uh, was burst in front of me. So somebody, I was injured, injured on the forearm. So anyhow, he was particularly bound to your structure, I didn't realize because he was a serious guy. So after that, the second, the, this thing was, uh, I was hitting the, the you know, my, 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 the back, it's very difficult to find out what he was doing. So he was on the side, then he was on the side, then he was on the side, then he was on the side. So anyhow, at that time, I didn't realize that the Gushai was my captain, encouraging my boys. And actually, the boys were encouraging me also. Indian soldiers were not new to the horrors of the Second World War, having entered the Italian theater as a battle-hardened force, fresh from the dramatic defeat of Rommel, the Desert Fox, in North Africa. The 4th, 8th and 10th Indian divisions were part of the legendary British 8th Army, led initially by General Montgomery, the hero of North Africa, arguably the finest British commander of the Second World War. All our troops were seasoned battle veterans. We had fought against Rommel, so we were not uh, raw troops. Therefore, we were used not as cannon fodder, because we could complete any task assigned to us. We who were with the troops know it because of the fact that we could produce the goods. We could cross rivers and we were fighting against the grain of the country. There was a river, there was a range. There was a river, there was a range. So that is why this uh, division, 8th Indian Division, was known as the One More River Crossing Division. Taking part in the crossing of the Great River Barriers, the Bifano, Trinio, Sangro and Gadi. They forced their way across so many rivers, the 8th became famous as the River Division. And it was said that if you wanted a tough river crossing accomplished, you just sent for the 8th. 